you have a raffle ticket, baby? You? Yeah. Oh, okay. I have to make sure everybody was paying attention. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay, let's, let's go again. Eight, nine, four, two, five, zero. All right, now. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
but Dayton Foundation. And then, you know, I, I, have, I say this everywhere I go, I have an awesome team, and members of that team are here today. Uh, in the back is Judith Spurlock. She is the chief of elementary schools. That's a fancy title that says that essentially she takes care of the elementary principals and makes sure that they're okay. And there are 17, 16 elementary principals and one preschool. And as I mentioned before, that's a tough job. Uh, and then, I think my partner is here with that. Yeah. Our new assistant superintendent of instruction and leadership, Lisa Miner is here. Lisa, is, uh, we, have, we, we did a lot of work together um, for about four or five years. Offices are right next to each other. We supervise schools and a whole bunch of other stuff. And um, I, I, uh, I want to let you know, we got your bookcase and it has all 800 books in it. <laughs> she is a voracious reader. All 800 in there. I'm sure you probably ordered another 200. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm glad you got something to eat. Uh, I've been kind of making this up as I go. So the first one at Wright Brothers, uh, there were some questions, and I'm gonna go back to those questions, and then there were some new questions, and then I'm gonna ask you if you have any questions. So the questions from Wright Brothers last week were, RTA schedules not aligning with school schedules, students being late as a result. Uh, I talked about that last night on the news. We're still in uh, I don't want to use the word negotiations. I shouldn't have said that. I don't even say discussions with RTA about aligning their bus schedule with our school schedule so that our kids can get to school on time instead of having to come super late or super early. And so that's an ongoing discussion. Um, if you've been reading any of the uh, newspaper articles about the RTA um, and whether or not they're being accommodating or not, I think the newspaper articles speak for themselves. Uh, DPS yellow bus transportation. Uh, I was, you know, this is really good. This came before the first week really got started. And so DPS yellow bus transportation. I'm really proud to announce that in three days, we've had no uncovered routes here in Dayton Public Schools. Um, now, we've had a couple of little hiccups sometimes, a little late, not, not real late, but a little late. Um, we've had some stops that were not, did not show up, and so we missed a couple stops. But anytime you can get up every day in any school system, especially your urban school system, and cover routes all day on a regular basis, you're off to a great start. That means the kids got to school, and then after school, um, it is a long day, and the elementary principals have to wait if there's no bus, if the route's uncovered. They have to wait with the children, and so the teachers, and sometimes people stay over just out of the goodness of their heart, parents, but it makes a long day even longer. And then parents, of course, are getting their kids home late, and so it is really tough. Transportation is really at the epicenter of what we need to do, and if we can get that right, uh, we, can have, we can have not a good year, but a great year. And I just left the, the uh, transportation center, and it is one of my favorite places to go. We have one of our transportation specialist in here right now. There you go. You up. <laughs> Janelle does a great job of telling me exactly what, what things are. I appreciate you for that. <laughs> Academics, what are your plans to improve test scores? I get that a lot. I get it a lot on paper, I get it in an email, and I get it on television and radio. Um, I don't have specific plans like that to say improve test scores. We have, a plan, we have plans to improve students' experience in school. And test scores are one of many things. So we have plans to have regular field trips. That's an experience. We have plans to have more interactive and engaging instruction. That's an experience. We have plans to have more, especially the elementary schools, more activities for kids. So what I want to do is I want to make this a place where you want to get up every day as a child and go to school. Um, I was at Charity, and I'm glad you're here, Ms. Goins. I was at Charity uh, in the classroom earlier this week. And the teacher and the kids were sitting in a circle, and they were getting ready 
to leave, it was the end of the day. And they were to tell the teacher how they, how they felt as the day was in. Anxious, tired. Uh, I would say three quarters of those young ladies said they were sad. Sad because they had to go home. <laughs> sad because they had to go home. They said, I want to stay. And the teacher said, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> and my line was going. See you tomorrow. But that's what we want. We want, we want our 12,000, about 500 kids now, maybe 600. We want them to say, I don't want to leave. I want to stay. And so that was a really special moment for me. So that's what we want to do. Test scores is low level. We're talking about some high-level stuff, creating experiences for people. Uh, what is the course of action when a student is bullying, or what, is, what are we going to do to address it, and then what's the course of action for bullying? So that's a pretty common question across districts, across the nation. Um, when we engage kids, teachers in the community inside the school, bullying goes down. Uh, when we deal with social emotional learning and we execute it with fidelity, bullying goes down. There are lots of things we can do as educators so that bullying is not as prevalent, but when it does happen, there's an Ohio revised code that suggests that the principal has to fill out a report and develop a safety plan, and then we have to execute and follow the safety plan. And we plan to do that. If we've not done it in the past, we're definitely going to do it this year because it is a really big deal. Uh, it's probably the thing that we see most as educators. And we have to define bullying, too. Yeah, I mean, because bullying has, has changed over the years. You know, I, you know I'm, in, I'm headed toward my sixth decade here. When I was a kid, the things that were called bullying then, I mean, gosh, they would be in prison now. You know, so, so bullying's changed. And so we have to acknowledge that, definitely define what it is, and then act when we think it's, when, when we think it's bullying. Bell times. Why do some schools have a 7 o'clock a.m. bell schedule? After school activities typically, typically are neighborhood school centers or schools with um, early bell times. And so that's part of it. Sometimes it's athletics. There's a lots of different reasons. Uh, what we want to do, I don't think I said this last week at Wright Brothers, what we want to be do is we want to develop a, a three-year bell schedule. That means that when you get your paperwork from Bellhaven or whatever school it is, for the next three years, it's the same bell schedule. Uh, that honors and respects you as parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, whoever is picking up, dropping off, or waiting on your child to come home. When we change bell schedules, it changes work schedules. It changes babysitting schedules. It changes everything. Um, and so we, we are dedicated to that this year. We have a team of people who's working on that to say, how do we get bell schedules, and keep them in place for three years. I prefer five. We'll see what happens. But I've, I've had, the, uh, had the fortune of working in other districts and learning, and um, that's not normal to have different bell times every year. It's an inconvenience for the entire community, and we want to fix it. Uh, is there a way to create an after-school STEM program? Is there a way to create more extracurricular activities? You know what? I want to give this to our assistant superintendent and let her answer that. Thank you, Dr. Lawrence, and thank you for the question. Um, we have definite plans to enhance our after school programming and STEM opportunities and camps and things like that. We have a gifted coordinator as well as our equity. Uh, director who have been working tirelessly to make sure for all levels there are engaging activities. Um, we are partnering with several community groups, we're partnering with several universities, um, many of our neighborhood school centers as well as Bell Haven and Charity and many of the schools here we have plans for that. So we're looking forward to it. We'd like you to give your principal specific suggestions if there's something you'd like to see. But we want to uh, develop a program where students have exposure to the arts earlier, 
So if they're going to think they're going to audition for Steigers, we're actually providing those lessons and those experiences so they can be trained and at least know what they're interested in. If they're interested in STEM, we want to promote our STEM high school. So we want to provide the robotics and all of those things that will spark their interest and help them be more successful as they move on to high school. So thank you. Thank you. There should be more band programs. We agree. We agree. Uh, we are uh, we're in motion with this right now. I was going to call you and tell you this later. Uh, we, <laughs> we've been busy. We've been busy. We start early. We're running all day. We don't get a chance to see each other sometimes until now. Uh, we are uh, getting ready to um, add some personnel to manage and supervise K-6 band activity, professional development for the teachers, and help coach and assist kids. And we received another um, a consultant offer to help with our um, after school bands uh, to really get them, uh, get them improved and put them in a situation where they can uh, compete um, at a local, regional, and even national level. So those two are sitting on my desk and um, Ms. Minor, I want to bring them right on down to yours. <laughs> She's got this. Uh, let's see here. What is your plan to retain and attract teachers? I love the retention question, right? That's, that's, part, of, that's part of the five C's behind me. Culture, communication, commitment, competences, collaboration. If we can do those things, we can retain teachers. Really, it's about... How do we make a space for adults that is safe space, one where they feel respected, heard, and one where they get to work with partners, one where um, their ideas are heard. But more importantly, retention is, is just as important, if not more important, than recruiting. Because you have to retain really good people. There's something called institutional knowledge, and when they leave, they take that institutional knowledge with them, meaning they know how the operation works. They know what to do and when to do it, and they help mentor and train other people. And so our goal is to really keep our employees. It costs more to lose an employee than train a new one than it does to keep the one that you have. And attracting teachers is around really changing the perception of Dayton Public Schools and, and, our, and our reputation. And we can do that by, by just getting better and focusing on the details of customer service and your experience as an adult. I used to think this was just about kids but I don't anymore as my career goes on. There are about 2,300 employees. There's uh, about 12,500 kids. I think it's gonna be easier for us to get a message across to 2,300 employees so that they can take care of the 12,500 kids. And so we're actively working to make sure that all the pieces matter, from transportation to nutrition services, to, to custodians, to um, skill trades, to clerical, um, paraprofessionals, that every single human being that's involved in the operation, administrators involved in the operation of the school, that they know that this is an effort that is about what Dayton Public says, looks like, and stands for. And if we can do that on a consistent basis, we can recruit kids back because we want to do that as well. You know, those who have left us, uh, they left us not because of test scores. I promise you, and this is, not, this is not to be derisory or negative, I promise you most people don't know what AMA stand, AM, AMO stands for and what it is on a report card, annual measurable objectives, and what the baselines are per subgroup. I promise you most of them haven't seen the growth chart and know what red, black, gr red, green, and yellow mean those growth charts. There's, on the Ohio Department of Education's website, there's a bunch of statistics that are associated with district report cards. That is for most people who are in education, and even everyone in education doesn't know that. We have 2,300 employees, most of which are not teachers or administrators. So when people leave us, they leave because of poor customer service, because we treated them badly, because a parent-teacher conference went south, because we didn't address their needs, 
because we didn't follow up with testing for um, students with disabilities, because we didn't answer the phone. Yeah, that's what happens. We, we're, one of our goals this year is to get way better at customer service so that we can keep you as, as students and parents and attract more back and so that we can also keep employees, answer our own calls, phone calls and messages. School's not returning parent phone calls. We're on it. <laughs> right, right there. Um, teachers in school is not communicating enough with parents. We're on it. Uh, how do you plan on getting more parents involved? Uh, well, activities like this is one way, and also providing uh, parents a chance to be engaged in a different way, not just recruiting them to sell the popcorn and the cookies and the candy bars, but being a part of leadership teams to help us make decisions. We believe parents are our partners, and we are going to succeed through collaborative means, parent and community engagement. And so I know Ms. Worley, who is our lead, district lead for parent and communication, parent engagement is always seeking parents to be on leadership teams for buildings when we make decisions about after school programming or whatever we want to enhance in the building we like to get parent feedback and so we'd like to take the engagement level to a different to the engagement of parents to a different level so that as we grow and make changes it's a part of all of us we all can take credit in the success a lot of our parents are our best recruiters. So we definitely uh, don't want to discount that. And we believe that providing multiple ways, you know, we just came out of a pandemic, but maybe at the for parent meetings, we can do it on Zoom instead of parents always having to physically come in. Just multiple ways you'll see that will start happening uh, as we work with our principals and school leaders. Thank you. Appreciate you. Uh, this, is, this is like a meeting on a new business. Now we got done with the old business. Why can't preschoolers ride bus with siblings? Preschool busing is not funded. We receive no money for preschool busing. So kids kindergarten through 12, uh, we provide um, busing for. No preschool bus funding. What is the plan for hiring athletic trainers? Uh, Chief Victoria Jones, who supervises athletics, she submitted a couple of plans recently, and we are rapidly working to go through vetting those so that we can submit them to the Board of Education to be boarded uh, for the September meeting, and we may have to move sooner since football starts tonight. Uh, we do have, to the, currently today, I think the nurses are out there, and we have some other staff who have medical backgrounds, but we, to, who, to whomever wrote this question, yes, um, we had a relationship with Premier that we no longer have, and Kettering Health, and now we, we don't have a relationship now, so we're working on uh, making sure the students are safe while they're out for out at athletic events and at practice. Um, this one says bell times for lunch and recess. I'm going to assume that that's associated with my earlier comments about a consistent bell time. If it's lunch and recess, lunch, lunch is 30, 30 minutes. Uh, so the spur like is it 20 10? 20 for lunch, 10 for recess, or is it 15 15? It just depends on the little ones, it might be 20 10. From the experts here who are elementary principals, uh, little ones 20 10. Older, 15, 15, okay. Uh, we, we, have, we got a lot of questions on this last year. We actually, we did. Operations, I was in operations last year, and we were involved in this. We had to go out and um, observe lunches to make sure the kids were getting a chance to finish their food, that they weren't stuffing it down and running outside, or not even being able to finish it and lunch was over. And so we've not, I, I've been at lunch duties, uh, Ms. Spurlock, but they've been mostly in high school. So maybe we'll circle back to elementary this week and check it out. So uh, we'll be at Stivers next week. I will be able to say that um, 
I've gone to several elementary lunches. I just have, I've been to several elementary schools. Actually, I've been to almost all of them, but I haven't been to their lunch. So we'll, we'll follow up. Uh, athletics is another topic. It just says athletics. I can say we have an extraordinary commitment to athletics. Uh, we just finished the Fitness Welcome Stadium. It is uh, a, a phenomenal uh, renovation of an iconic stadium. <sighs> Academics are important. Other extracurricular is important, like band. Um, there are other things that are important other than athletics, but athletics is really important. Um, I have to tell you, I've worked in other districts and yeah, athletics draws fans, brings parents out. Uh, athletics is a place where um, there's a lot of support. I mean, things get kind of intense. So I'm, I'm glad that we're paying attention to athletics and having spaces like Welcome Stadium and extending our offerings that we have that are, that are part of our sports offering. That we don't just have baseline offerings, but we're offering all other, um, what we call other sports other than the major sports, which are football and basketball. So I think that's important. I don't think I don't think it's one or the other. Like I don't think it's athletics and or. I, I think it's both. Both. And then Title One. Um, this minor, I have no idea what that is. Was, was there? A, was there? There was no question with that. It was just Title One. So. Okay. Well, maybe. So we have Title I funding and money is allocated to buildings to help improve the climate, reading, and math scores. So when teachers get resources and materials, sometimes we have teachers who are, are hired specifically to provide interventions. It varies from building to building. Um, Title I programming can pay for after school and before school programming tutoring, curriculum materials, resources, and incentives and things for the kids for to keep a positive school climate. Um, there are Title I meetings that your administrators will be holding uh, throughout the year where you can get specifics for each building what they're spending the Title I funds for. Thank you. Uh, that's all for new business. Do we have any new new business? Any questions from? Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Um, my son is um, single from here, and he's in he's not elementary, but he lives here elementary. They did an excellent job here, but he's in PJ Brown now, and we had to take him to the hospital today because he's severely dehydrated. And one of the programs that was set in place here with the school nursery was I was able to bring in five cases of water during class because they're not, with him having the condition he has, they're not able to get the water in time and not able to have the hydration. So I was just wondering if there's going to be something put in place for kids that have these types of disabilities. Do you, would you like to, um, we're going to respond to that, would you like to either get a phone call from or sit down with the principal and the nurse? Yeah, before you leave, who wants, who wants to take her information so we can get it to Charisse? I appreciate you, yeah. Charisse, get to take your information. We'll uh, get it to the principal and the school nurse. I just met her last week. She's new. She's going to be terrific. And I'll be out there tomorrow at lunch duty, and I'll tell them about it. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Uh, I was just wondering, my grandson is at E.J. Brown, and a lot of parents were saying, their kids are interested in after school sports, but due to their work schedule, they the kids can't participate. Are we looking to the future to start busing after to drop off the transportation after they in after school program? To answer your question unequivocally, yes. Uh, that used to be called the activity bus, yes. right? Yes. And the activity bus yes. came to the school, picked the kids up, and it's took them home. So for us, it was in phases. The first phase was 
Let's get enough drivers. Check. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> the next one was, let's get everybody to school. Yes. Check. And now it's like, well, we have enough drivers. We get them to school. Um, we have we have enough budgeted dollars because that's additional um, funding. funding because the drivers, of course, that's more, they make more money, it's additional hours. But now we can we can sit down. We can really seriously sit down and look at bringing activity buses back, and especially at the middle school level. The middle school has been a huge emphasis for us this year. We have poured massive resources into the middle schools. E.J. Brown, uh, Mr. Ezrati, is this on camera? Am I on camera? Is that thing on? Okay, since it's on. E.J. Brown is brand new. Whatever you heard about E.J. Brown, put it out your mind. Brand new. Brand new principles, uh, beautiful on the inside. It looks like it's brand new. The custodial team did an amazing job. Teachers, many brand new teachers, they looked amazing the first few days. This is going to be a story to be told from where it was to what it is now. So what you heard about it, let that go. I, I, I encourage you, anybody who took their child out of E.J. Brown, because we've been, the principal's been calling parents and they've been saying, no, I don't want to come back. And Ms. Swirly is going to help us develop a retention plan for the ones that are there and also uh, reclaiming, reclaiming. We're going to reclaim those that are left and just have them come take a tour. Come on back. We, <laughs> whoo. First family night, September 19th, E.J. Brown, 530 to 7.30. First family night, September 19th, 5.30 to 5.30 to 7.30, yes, 5.30 to 7.30, September 19th, first family night. I, uh, yeah, I can't wait to get there tomorrow. I mean, it's just, it's just so exciting. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, sir, uh, thank you for your setting up tonight. I saw your five C's, and I like the last one, collaboration. Yeah. Um, I'm a mental health advocate. And I have a scholarship that I give to high school and college students. It's called the Uncle Hayes the Stimulation Mental Health Scholarship. And I would love to collaborate with the high school counselors. Uh, Angela Worley connected me with Metal Day on last year. I was able to speak to a group of students. But I've given over uh, $29,000 in the past three years, free money. And all the students have to do is write an essay about mental health, their own worldview, or, or someone they love and loved one. My mom ended her life by suicide when I was 11 years old. Uh, I was a day public school student. I graduated from uh, Stuyvesant Brown High School. Uh, I'm an adjunct professor at Liberty University, but I want to give back to the community free money. And uh, if there's college fair, I mean high school college fairs, I would love to have access to at least give the counselors some information about the scholarship so we can promote it more in day public schools. Uh, thank you so much, first of all. Uh, last year, there was a young lady from Dunbar High School that did get a scholarship. But again, it's just it's for all high school students. And there's no GPA requirement. Uh, Ms. Worley, let's get him on my schedule. <laughs> let's get him on my schedule. And we'll, uh, first of all, we'll make that happen. We have uh, an assortment of resources to do that. So we have success coaches there who can help you with kids, we have males of color, females of color who can help you with kids, resiliency coordinators who can help you with kids, um, counselors, although full transparency, if, uh, since I know you're gonna upload this, we need counselors. We need counselors, bad. With our counselors, we have one counselor in several schools, four or five of uh, high schools, one in the middle. We, we really, really need, that's a, that's a need. Um, we, now we have all those other supports I mentioned you, we place those in high need schools. And some of us only have one counselor, so we're aware of that because we balance it out by sending other resources there. But we really need trained, um, licensed counselors. That is critical uh, for middle school and high school. And, um, and, and certainly, I can't wait to have the conversation with you face to face, one on one about partnerships. And Ms. Worley, uh, Ms. Worley, she, she keeps my, my church schedule. She sends me to a church each Sunday. Where, where am I going this Sunday? <laughs> <laughs>
I went last Sunday. I know, but I didn't know who was going there. Well, you, 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 Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to double back. I got, I got a few things, but I wanted to double back on when you were talking about lunch. Um, I always had an issue with that, but I'm a parent of kids that gra graduated from um, pub, I mean, private school. I was one of the ones that left basically for the things that you were saying, but mm -hmm. I left as early as preschool. Mm -hmm. So um, I have a little one that will be attending River's Edge and I had a fight to get her in there with the board. Um, but back to the lunch. When you go and sit in the school with the kids at lunch, um, is it a chance that you will increase the time? Because 15 minutes is a, a, a little bit short for a child. By the time they're standing in the line, first of all, lunch typically starts when the bell rang, or I don't know how they do it at the public schools now, or if the bell rang and they go out to lunch, but by the time they get their lunch, sit in line, get their food open, they got what, at least maybe nine minutes left to eat. So then they're scarfing the food down, which is not digesting properly, but then you taking them from the table, and then you taking them outside, and they got like 10 minutes to burn off energy. And that's for the kids that's not being disciplined and their um, recess is being taken away. And a lot of times I think that would cause us a lot of behavior because um, some kids are hungry, you don't know the home life. So if they're not getting a chance to eat at school and then they're not able to voice it and they don't have the time, then that's just gonna cause a disruption in the afternoon because it's hard for kids to transition as it is being younger. So when they're being brought back from recess, they only got like 10 minutes, if that, because I go to a lot of schools and just look around and I need to have kids in there. But if that, so then when they're brought back in the classroom, they're still on go mode because they haven't had enough time. Um, so with that, with being the lunch, that's the number one thing. If you do see that they don't have enough time, are you going to increase it? So uh, the schedule itself is pretty typical across the board in elementary is everywhere based on subject content and then based on lunch and recess. So pretty simple in terms of the school day and how long the school day is. Uh, I can say, I can, I can commit this to you, that I know that uh, Ms. Spurlock, I see her eyes, she's over there shaking her head, that she, we have operations people. Um, Ms. Minor is, is to my left, or your right. We'll be out in the building specifically looking at that. Um, and, and we'll be able to find out where it's an issue and where it isn't, probably in less than three or four days, given, given the, the range in which we cover buildings. You know, the team that I'm on is about, there's about 10 of us. And we're all of us are probably averaging four to six buildings a day. So yeah, so it's an enormous range in the commitment to being in buildings where kids are. And so it won't take us long to, to get uh, observable feedback. And then it won't take us long to take that observable feedback and turn it into an action plan in the spaces in which it is an issue. Okay. Yes, Ms. Nair. I saw the word collaboration, and I'd like to hear what you talk about. Um, what do you anticipate doing to collaborate with other, both social and uh, governmental um, people in, in our community to get them on board? You know, I'm going to turn it over to the collaboration queen. <laughs> Does a great job with partnerships. Um, we'll be working together, uh, but certainly I want to introduce her as a person that can stand in for me on any day. We are actively working with multiple community partners and plan to increase that. Um, having stakeholder focus teams and inviting people into our school, into our meetings to share the good news, we believe we're gonna draw more in. Um, it's an open door. We have from the Adamus board to Children's, the list goes on and on, oh, close to 20 partnerships 
that are helping to support various schools in various ways. One of the biggest uh, uh, successes is our partners with our universities. We're, we had a meeting just last week with the University of Dayton and a young lady who came up through the public school system. Um, she's actually a professor, an engineer, um, and has a program to recruit uh, minorities in engineering and exposing them to college level courses. And so they're actually, University of Dayton uh, stepped on board and they're gonna help us develop those high level math classes from middle school through high school to actually make sure our students have opportunities for engineering scholarships, whether it be at UD or beyond at some other, other schools. So that's just one. Um, Learn to Earn Dayton is a major partnership and they're adopting having a position called a career navigator. And they're gonna work with all middle schools. So when uh, Superintendent Lawrence said that E.J. Brown is brand new, our other middle schools are also gonna get support. And that navigator is gonna help them navigate their careers whichever way it would be, whether they want to go into STEM services, healthcare, any of those high demand fields to give back to the community. Uh, we believe that as we start to graduate, more students college and career ready, partnerships will still, will continue to increase. Uh, so there's just multiple partners we could go on and on, uh, but that's, you know, we support the whole region. We're the largest district, and we are, our students are the future. They are the future workforce. And so, between all of the graduation pathways, we're looking to partner with them. So, our students have job shadowing experiences, internships, jobs, um, industry credentials, you name it. So, thank you for that question. Yeah, we also evaluate those partnerships for their fidelity and effectiveness. So it is one thing to say you have a partner, but the next question is like, what are you really doing with the partner? <laughs> yeah, how's that work? And so we go through and kind of cull that list and say, or go through and sort through it and say, hey, who are our high impact partners that are really working with us to help align their support with our needs? What's the next level of partner and the next level? And how do we make sure that we align those partners with the appropriate schools and the right spaces during the right times? And so it's really a complex arrangement of our strategic planning based on building need, based on what partners are able and capable of doing. Yes, go right ahead. Thank you. Um, I want to piggyback on the lunch issue because that has been a concern for many, many years. And I'm wondering, I've always been intrigued by the idea of recess then lunch as a way to get the energy out and then kids can sit and eat without having to race through and then go back to the classroom having settled themselves down from being out running around. And I've noticed that Dr. Leah Williams is like a researcher extraordinaire on your staff. Yes. And yes, I'm wondering if that could be a project that, as you're looking at this holistically, if she could find any studies about the efficacy of that kind of scheduling and how that might improve di um, digestion and classroom behavior. Uh, great idea. I saw the elementary principal shaking their head because some, some, yeah. yeah, a lot of schools in Dayton already, some schools in Dayton do that. Um, I've seen it, when I was in elementary school, we did a flip-flop based on the grade. Uh, the little kids ate first, let them eat longer, and then the big kids, because they don't really want to eat, they just want to get their stuff right outside. Uh, they went ahead and um, went to recess first, but it's something that, yeah, she can definitely uh, research since we're already, in, 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 we're already doing it in some places and then not in others. And I talk a lot about competence and I use words like empirical research. I've been told not to use that in public. They, they say, stop using that. That really means that she does a really good job of taking a question like that and coming up with multiple answers on what it could be based on our situation here in Dayton. 
So uh, knowing Leah, she's uh, she won't be able. She can't wait. <laughs> yeah, she loves. She she is she is a researcher extraordinaire. And thank you for that feedback. Yes, ma'am. So I'm not sure if this is a question or a statement, but while you're in the lunchroom, are you going to be observing if the children are actually eating because they complain a lot about the school lunch? So they're not eating a lot of it. So when they come home, they are running directly to the kitchen because they're hungry. They didn't eat the lunch. They didn't like it. All this week, my kids have complained about the lunch, except for today. So, I'm packing their lunches now. I mean, other so, options, better options. So, uh, two things. The first thing is, when I, you know, when I do go to lunch, uh, I sit down and eat with kids. I sit down now. I haven't eaten the school lunch yet, so I can't tell you about that. Miss Kelly, Miss Kelly said it's kind of bland. Uh, kind of bland. Not, that that's, have, that's yeah. not their. Um, it's kind right. of like the right. the guidelines. Yeah. So I get it. That's right. It sure is. So Kathy Defer, our nutrition services manager, we've asked for that on a number of occasions. And there are lots of rules to the game of nutrition services. I mean, man. And there are just certain things you can and can't do, to certain things you can and can't serve. Um, and so, and certain things you have to serve, and certain things kids have to take. And so, yeah, we can explore that. In fact, there's, you know, there, Kathy, is, Kathy and I have this running joke. She says, you sit and eat with the kids, but you bring your lunch. She said, you should sit and eat a lunch, and I am. Absolutely. I am. So it's, it's on camera when it <laughs> But he won. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Well, they said they had something like orange chicken and rice. That's not appealing to a five year old. It's okay. just not. So we uh we got it, we're on it. Yes, ma'am. I wanted to elaborate. Uh, the taco with spicy meat, a lot of kids not gonna eat that. It, you know, it was on the calendar for Tuesday, and my grandson said, no way, <laughs> no way. It, it was taco with spicy meat that was on. Something a little bit more kid friendly. Yeah, yeah spicy what they meat. Like. What kids like. Yeah. yeah just and it, what they yeah. like. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, we, I look at the calendar, I look at the breakfast. I know certain things, my grandson, they finicky, they get it for me, faithfully, I tell anybody. Okay. But some of that stuff, I wouldn't even eat myself. So I, how can we expect kids to eat something we know we ain't gonna eat ourselves? When you look at the calendar, are there options on there? The you know, only option is on Friday, and that's the uh, manager's choice is on Friday. No, there's always a menu. Yeah. There's option. always a there's main always meal, a but then there's always an option. So the child doesn't want the main meal, there's always a second option for the children. Sometimes it's a yogurt meal or muffins or something else. It's a whole meal that has all of the nutritional value in it. So if they don't want the main meal, they can always choose another option. Sometimes there's a salad option too. So there's always a main meal, but then there's always at least one option. Oh, and they just don't get that right, they, one. Yeah. Just get the so when they go through the line, if they don't want that, they can go to the end, and there's always an option for any child. Okay. Uh, thanks, Ms. Brilla. But to that point, we probably need to communicate that. Yes, we need yeah. to communicate that. Yeah, we need to do a better job communicating that. Yeah. So I said, yeah, my, yeah. my grandson, yeah, they love salad, so yeah, they, they can do that. To hold them. They eat so early. They do eat early. <laughs> my question goes back to, once again, EJ Brown. Okay. Uh, my son is a morning bus rider, but I know it's the first week, so buses are late. So I've been feeding them breakfast before they go. But this is a problem he had last year and a problem that's starting beginning of this year. If the buses are late to the school, he doesn't get breakfast. And he has to wait all the way until lunch to eat. So I've been giving him breakfast before he boards the bus, but if the bus school bus is late, he's not getting breakfast. 
He said that because the yes. kids walk right in and go to breakfast. I'm, I'm, I watch him. Let me say this. I work at the medical tech. I check kids' bags, me. When I was a business manager, I did it. I do it as a superintendent. When they come in there, nobody, they go right to the right and go to, go to the breakfast room if they want to. Jobs are different, but you're still handling parents. Um, it was a lot of discrepancy, like I said, which I got handled, but I had to literally contact the state to get answers. And I had to go through my oldest daughter because she has a lot of connections and she's a UD student, but I don't like to do that. So I think that when given communication, they're just basically, like for instance, for a perfect example, Coming to enroll your child at school. Uh, customer service from the front desk is good. Customer service from the back is not good. I watch them turn parents away without giving them different resources. Um, and I gave them probably, I want to say like three months to before I start going over the top um, to where it's like, They'll tell you one thing that's written in black and white and it's stone, but then when you get there, it's another thing. My issue was when we was preschool and the start date. Uh, basically, typically preschool started at three. Preschool promise started three to five. And say nowhere in the print, three and a half to five, not three and a quarter to five, it said three to five. So when I go down there, um, and I started looking prior a whole year, a year prior before my daughter even turned three, looking for schools where I wanted to put her, whether I wanted to start off at private or whether I wanted to give the public a try. So I decided like, okay, well, I wanted her to have some balance with her race, so I decided to go public. But I decided to go Montessori because I don't believe in traditional teaching. So. I looked, they told me the guidelines to take, but once it came time to enrollment, literally a week before enrollment, I was told, like, oh, sorry, Ms. Stowers, we're not going to be able to enroll your child because she's three, and they called it an early three, so they pushed the date back. She needed to be three by March 31st, so I said, well, that's a communication problem because you should have told me that when I kept coming down here. My problem to that is I got it fixed because I'm, I'm a parent that don't stop into a situation that's going to be done or everybody just going to have a headache. So I end up getting it fixed, but my concern is parents who don't have that fight, parents who don't have that connection, or parents who don't have that knowledge get turned away without resources on where to send a child. And the state requirement states that a child has to be three to five in a preschool promise program for for a traditional Head Start program and fully potty training. So when you're turning kids away that are three, or the young three or whatever you call it, um, that, that's kind of not what the state guidelines were. And I thought that we were supposed to be following the state guidelines because from what the state told me, that wasn't the guideline. So then, of course, it got fixed. And then I got, a, a, of course, a bunch of apologies for the way I was talked to. I mean, talking to me any kind of way. Because they, they didn't know. I just came down there and fit a cat, graphic tee, and some cargo army fatigue pants. They was literally talking to me like I didn't have intelligence enough to know the rules, to know. I done volunteered at the board. And this my, she 18, since she was two, three years old, I started for many, many years just volunteering. 
And I just want to know if something can be done about their communication because it's very disappointing. It turns parents away and they steer towards private education because when you go into a private education, we don't deal, you deal with some hiccups, not perfect. But when they say something, it's literally done. When you come in and they're giving you a guideline, that guideline is met. It's not like, oh, you know, this, 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 and you gotta jump through hoops, and I, I'm sorry. So I'm just thinking like, for the public setting to make parents be drawn to come, to make them feel comfortable, they have to work together and work on communication. I watch them argue right in front of me. And I just think it turns a lot of pa parents away from public schooling because of that. And I just want to make sure, I guess, that something basically is said about it and they know. Because even though, you know, I got a phone call and I was supposed to write an email to explain, it's still something I just want to make sure that you're aware of that's happening. I am aware. Yeah. I'm, I'm keenly aware. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't work in Central Office last year. Yeah. But I still knew that. Because I hear it when I'm out, out in schools. I hear it when I go to the gym. I hear it when I go to get a cup of coffee or an espresso or whatever I want to drink. I hear it. I hear it all the time. That's where that came from. It came from our research on central office and what central offices don't do. Not just this one, but many. Yeah. Well, it's one minute after seven. On tour, we'll be at um, Stiper's next week, next Thursday. So two more Thursdays. Uh, these are really exciting. We get a chance to hear from parents, hear from the community. Uh, they remind us uh, around the work that we have to do, um, and the reason that we're here out in buildings on Thursdays is because we're not. We're. I think Eminem said it. We're not afraid. <laughs> We're not afraid. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna deal with these issues head on. Head on. Yeah, we're gonna acknowledge what hasn't gone right. And and actually not only acknowledge it, we're gonna move on it. Uh Ms. Frolock, were we in a were we in a special ed meeting today? Yes. Yes we were. Yeah, moving on some of the things you're talking about right now. Do we have a special ed meeting tomorrow? Yes. Yes. Moving on some of the stuff you talked about. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, she is. She is. Yeah. Ms. Nerney? You have a big job to do, and thank you for stepping up and doing this. Thank you. I appreciate it. Don't leave any food. Take it with you.